Brian, let, let's start with you. You played for Mike Dean and Tom Crean. Now you're the head coach at Bradley. When you're in practice now with your team, how often do you find yourself saying things that Coach Dean and Coach Crean said to you? Well, quite often. I mean, they're both great coaches, first off, and I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't have a chance to play for them and learn from them. Um, but they were different in ways. They had their unique styles. But I would say with Mike Dean, uh, his a very, he's a great teacher. He was a great teacher of the game. He would always speak in black and white. There was no gray area with Mike, and everybody knows Mike out there, knows Mike is a, a black and white speaker, truth teller at all times. And, but he had a unique ability, Mike, to be on you and demand you, from you in practice. And then right when you stepped outside those sidelines, he put his arm around you, and he'd have that relationship with you. And with Tom Crean, um, I thought I worked hard, and he, he just raises the bar, I think, of every player he has when it comes to work ethic. Um, great motivator, um, obviously a great teacher of the game, but I think with Coach Crean, I'd, he, he was a builder. He had a, he had a vision, great with marketing, ticket sales. I mean, he had a big vision for what he wanted to do here, and I learned a lot from that because I'm, you know, I'm kind of going through that right now with Bradley. Well, you mentioned the word vision. What was the... What was the culture like that you helped build from the beginning with Tom Green? Well, I, th I think he established his work ethic right away, um, the way he wanted uh, to act on and off the floor, uh, established uh, the intensity level that he wanted day in and day out. And uh, as a junior going into it, it was a great learning experience for me and for all my teammates, and I got a bunch of them here. Uh, which is wonderful to see them all and get a, and be around them. But he just, you know, every, every coach has their own personality. And when they come in and take over a program, they want to implement it. Uh, but I would say the work ethic, uh, the extra time putting into yourself, into the team, um, he really established from the get-go, and it helped all of us. Steve, did you know when you, when you were being recruited by Marquette sort of what you were getting into as far as the, the level of work and intensity that was, uh, was going to come your way? Uh, no, I didn't have a clue, and I don't know if that's because I was... Um, you think that's funny? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was because, like, the story Coach Crean likes to tell, that I used to work out at, in the summers at, like, a, a rehab clinic where I would put a couple... put, like, 40 pounds on the bench and get it in, and the fact that I played for my dad in high school. So I feel like since we had to go home together, there might have been a little more affection, a little more love there. <laughs> and I feel like Coach Crean also loved me. It was just, I think he showed it in a very different way. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, I was definitely not ready. No, I, honestly, when I was at, uh, when I came in as a freshman, I, I think I, I almost quit at one point because my feet hurt so much. And because I looked around, I was seeing Rob Jackson and Scott Merritt and D. Wade and these guys, and they, in my eyes, coming out of high school, looking at them and realizing how big they were, how powerful they were, how, how good they were, I just wasn't sure I was really ever going to be able to, to be that good. Well, what was Dwayne Wade like in practice? I remember the first time he actually came to Marquette to play was at the old gym. I used to go when I was like 15 or 16. Uh, Danielle, I don't know if that was legal or not. <laughs> <laughs> this is all foggy, but yeah. when I was... Uh, I, never, I never called you. No, no, no. <laughs> I never called you. Statute of limitations is over yeah, and all that yeah. anyway. <laughs> but when I was, uh, my early years in high school, freshman and sophomore, I would come and play at the old gym with Brian. He would, be, he would act so happy to see me. Oh, my God. Like, we're so happy to have you here. You imagine a 15-year-old kid, like, probably like, out of here, kid. But he was so nice to me. D. Wade came with Odarte Blankston to the old gym. And, and they played, and I went home that night, and you probably remember this, I went home that night, I told my parents, I just played with a guy who's going to be in the NBA. And coming from like a high school freshman or sophomore, you know, any NBA player that you look up to and think they're amazing. And I remember thinking the first time that we played, I told them, you know, th that guy was special. He's going to be really good. Brian, wasn't he redshirting when you were, you were playing? Yeah, unfortunately. I would have. I would have. <laughs> I would have loved to have played with him for a year, but... I mean, practicing against him every day, he made me a better player. I mean, I, I always laugh. I shot fakes so much because I could never get around him. So I had to figure out some way to get a shot off. Um, but I tell you, Coach Crean did a great job of, like, he, he's put him in leadership roles. We'd have a drill, like shell drill defensively. It was keep D. Wade out of the paint drill, it was called. And I remember Cordell and all those guys over there will probably remember this. We just had to keep 
D Wade out of the paint without letting him get in that paint. And it was almost impossible. So we knew athletically and physically he was so gifted. And then after my senior year, I went out and worked with the Milwaukee Bucks and he came with me. And I'll never forget this. Uh, I was just, you know, a fly on the wall watching D Wade go to work against Ray Allen and Sam Cassell and Big Dog Robinson. And I watched a guy that hadn't played a game at Marquette um, just put in work against all-stars in their prime. And I remember Coach Crean asked me, so how did Dwayne play? I'm like, uh, you're going to be all right, Coach. He's going <laughs> to be all right. You're going to be all right. Uh, he was a special player, special player. Well, Steve, you, you played in Conference USA. You, you were sixth man of the year one year, right? That's right. And then, and then the, in the Big East, what was the difference between CUSA and the Big East? You know, I just remember when we got to the Big East, feeling like every single night you were kind of on the stage that you dreamed of. You wanted to be playing against that competition that was truly going to push you. There was more national exposure. You kind of had more of an awareness of the teams that you were, that you were playing. And so I think there was always a top 100 list in high school. And um, you always kind of were watching how other guys were doing other places. And a lot of those guys, at least in my case, were at a lot of the Big East schools. And so I think it felt to me like every single night you were playing <coughs> the best competition and you knew you were going to be able to really see how good you were because you were facing those teams. And I think that's and when you're at that age, now we look back and you go, oh, like you played in the NBA, you played overseas. But when you think back to that time, you're not really sure if you're ever going to make it, if you're really that good yet. And so those were the years I feel like you're really trying to, to figure that out. And so I felt like being in the Big East uh, allowed us to really figure out who we were, how good we were as, as a team and, and as individuals. Well, Jarrell, one of the teams that you could measure yourself against was UConn. And you, you had a you had a double double and a big win against UConn. And that was wasn't that the difference between winning and losing, or was it the was it the 40, 40 some points that Steve yeah, had? I thought I was the only one that knew that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might, I always joke with my might, man. He might still, he might still be the only one that knows that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he uh, you know, obviously we had our first inaugural uh, Big East game. UConn and an uh, unbelievable environment and uh, playing against a really good team. I think they were ranked like number three in the country or something at the time. But uh, obviously, Steve was our senior. He was our leader. He, go, he comes out and goes absolutely <laughs> bananas. He's making everything. He starts pulling up from like the M and the MU, like a step past half court. <laughs> So we like we know it's gonna be one of those nights. He's got it rolling, and he's rebounding. So we know he's playing really well. <laughs> um, you see how mad he is? Yeah. You see? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I played. I guess I played okay that game. I just had a double double as a freshman in my first Big East game. But I don't think anybody ever really heard about it. But uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I always people say, "Do you remember the UConn game?" Or do you remember the UConn game? And I go, "You know, to be honest, I blacked out." <laughs> I really don't remember it at all. But then when I came back to, I said, I got a, I got a, a, a stat sheet. And I saw Rel had 19 and 12 against <laughs> UConn, ranked number two. And I'm thinking, we must have done really good. <laughs> and then I looked a little further down, and we had four, I had 41 and 16. And I thought, we didn't even need Rel. We didn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need it. No. Nope. <laughs> so, Could have done without it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate yeah, you, bro. No, thank you. Thank you, Steve. I'm always here for you. you always here for you. Wes, you, uh, you had a, a Wisconsin history in your family. Uh, what, made the, uh, what made the difference in, in coming to Marquette? I didn't really like the Badgers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't worry about it. It's about as simple as that. I'm not a Badger guy. Um, yeah, both my parents uh, went to Wisconsin. My mom was a Hall of Famer at Wisconsin. I'm from Madison. I chose the right school. <laughs> but it was a big, big part of it was, you know, growing up in, in Wisconsin where my dad was so well known, having the same name, um, kind of wanted to do my own thing. You know, I didn't want to be under that, that umbrella of, you know, what he did, you know, so. Coach Crean did a great job recruiting. Um, he got in touch with Jarrell and I and Dominique James. and um, we, we became friends before we really knew each other. And so we, Coach would tell me uh, Rell had a double-double in his high school game. He would be doing the same thing to us. And so we just kind of 
were intertwined before we even knew it, before we made the decision. And I just remember kind of like talking to these guys and like, you want to do this? And um, I think, did you commit first or did Nick? I have no idea. I don't remember. But it was just a domino coach, you know. Yeah, I think I, just, yeah. I, think both I started it. I think I Jarrell yeah, and Jarell Dominique Jarell committed Dominique the same day. Credit. I'm going to take credit for it if I did. And then they told me. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who hated the Badgers <laughs> took three more weeks to make his mind up. <laughs> I took another visit. Another <laughs> visit. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they jumped on board. Well, speaking of, of Dominique, uh, you had an unbelievably dynamic backcourt with the three of you. Uh, like the quickness and the power that you had and you were all over the place defensively what were your practices like hell oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically that in a nutshell Pretty um cool. competing and that's basically just all these guys that have talked before us all these players that have talked before us that set the foundation for what work is and what this family is about and what it is to be marquette and golden eagle by the way marquette almost didn't get me when they wanted to change their names is that right? To gold and all that stuff? I remember reading that. I'm like, oh, yeah. man, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I can be a Marquette gold. I don't know what that is. But I'm glad there's still Golden Eagles. But you see, I mean, everybody that came up here and talked, you see how much passion they had and all the, the toughness. And that's just really what stuck out to me was the toughness in the family. And that's what practice was. I mean, we... Steve tried to tackle somebody one time. Steve did. <laughs> <laughs> he made me do it. You have to. <laughs> Jamil, you, you, had to, you had to practice against uh, Jay Crowder and Jimmy Butler. I mean, when, when you were redshirting, isn't that right? Yeah. What was, uh, what was that like? That was, a, that was a level of intensity as well, kind of like, uh, like Wesley was talking about. Well, it wasn't quite hell as Wesley's talking about, but... Uh, <laughs> It, it was always difficult because uh, Jimmy was a senior, so uh, it was kind of his last go round. So he made it uh, he made it a purpose of his to to make sure everyone knew that. So in practice every day, he was kind of like the the ultimate competitor. He wanted to win everything. Like uh, we would do layup drills, and he would like compete with guys. Like oh, I made more than you. It was it was ridiculous. And then I had to guard uh, uh, Jay, and uh, Jay's always been like a physical specimen. But I think my uh, my worst problem with him was, was his hair. Um, so whenever he would move and stuff, his hair would always hit me in the face. So um, me, me and him got into a little, little tussle one day because I, I actually pulled it because it was in my face. And he got, he got mad at that. But um, other than that, it was, you know, it, it was something to, to learn from, uh, transferring from a place like Oregon, uh, from the Pac-10 than it was to the Big East. It was two, completely two different types of basketball. So uh, What was different? Um, I would say the Pac-10 was is, is more of a skill, up and down the floor, kind of, kind of fast pace uh, skill set. Um, and the Big East is more of a physical branding uh, type of basketball. Like to, uh, like Steve said, like every night you find yourself in a position to uh, tee it up with some of the best teams uh, in the country. I remember actually one time we actually went on, uh, we had a stretch where we played like Villanova, Cincinnati, Notre Dame, and then. Uh, um, I forget the last team. Maybe it was UConn somewhere in there, but um, it, it was just a different physical brand of basketball, and you had to bring your A game every night. Speaking of A game, let's start with you, Brian. Go go down the down the line. The 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 game you thought that your team, man, we we played our best. That was that was that was a, that was us. That was what we had. Well. I, 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 one of the biggest heartbreaks I probably had was my senior night here. I don't remember many games, and I laugh, as, as, as you all know, former players, we all get better every year. We score more points. We win more games. And uh, I don't remember a lot of games, but I remember we laid it on the line at, at home here senior year, and we lost in triple overtime to Louisville and weren't able to pull it off. And, I'll, and that one will always haunt me, and I'll never forget that. Uh, the exhaustion after the game and, and the feeling we had as a group. Um, but man, we had some great memories and I had some great teammates and great coaches and uh, all these former players and everyone here. Those are the memories I have are really the people. And I do want to say thank you to Steve 
for how he treats us alumni and former players. He has been, him and his staff have been wonderful to all of us. So thank you, Steve, Coach Wojo. Steve, how about you? Um, you know, if there was a game, it, it would have to be the Elite Eight game where we beat Kentucky. I think that, that <laughs> <laughs> I think that represented who we were. You know, it was that full season of work. Um, the locker room before that game, it was one of the Kentucky players had said that they did not know Rob Jackson's name. And he took that extremely personal. <laughs> extremely personal. And I don't even remember his name anymore, Rob, if that makes you feel any better. <laughs> but he said he didn't know Rob's name. And I remember Coach was telling him, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't know your name. And that just sort of was, I think, what we had built to. It was like, people don't know your name. And all of a sudden, we're in the Elite Eight. D. Wade has a triple-double. Rob has 24. You know, Travis was out there facilitating the whole night. Um, we, as a group, just played so well, and it was kind of that pinnacle moment for us. Jarrell? Oh, uh, yeah, I think uh, for me it's tough just to pick one. Uh, but if I, if I had to go with one, I would go with our – First game, I think it was my sophomore season, uh, we were in Kansas City in the CBE tournament, the college basketball experience tournament, which is really cool, a really cool event. Uh, we had like the little banquet and everything uh, prior to it, like the day before, I got to hang around like some basketball legends and stuff and see some cool stuff. Uh, but we played uh, Texas Tech the first game uh, when Coach Knight was still there. And, uh, and the, the winner got uh, Duke in the finals. So, uh, you know, coach kind of hyped us up saying that they wanted to, he was pretty sure everybody wanted to see a final with Bobby Knight versus, you know, coach, uh, coach K. And, uh, you know, we, we, we were ready to play spoiler that night. We played really good, man. Uh, like you said, we had a really, a really guard heavy team, fast end to end. I think, uh, that was like, for me, one of the, one of the best games we all played overall as a team. We were just flying on all cylinder, uh, cylinders, uh, offensively and defensively. And, uh, and got a chance to beat Duke after that too, which is always fun. <laughs> Wesley, how about you? Um, I forgot about that one until you said that one. <laughs> that was a good one. One game that sticks out to me, it wasn't a very good one for us, but then it, it's two part. <laughs> so our freshman year, Rel, myself, Neek, Burke, like you said, in our backcourt, like we were flying around. There wasn't a pass that we didn't think that we could get. There wasn't a steal that we didn't think that we could get. And we played against Georgetown. I've never played against a Princeton offense, backdoor cuts and all that. And coach was telling us, he's like, stay home, stay in front, stay in front. But we didn't care. And that film looked so, you remember that? That film was awful. <laughs> It was rail gambling, miss. <laughs> then I would go and miss. Then Nick would go and miss. <laughs> and then it, it just humbled us. It was like, man, we, we got to get grounded. And, and this, isn't, this isn't high school anymore. And then so fast forward to um, our senior years when uh, we lost to Missouri. We should have beat them. It was a terrible rule. He didn't get fouled, Kim English and all that. That was a bad call. But everybody just locked in. You know, and play everything that they left everything out there. You know, Nika had just come back from injury. Reese was starting for us, and nothing mattered. You know, we just gave it everything we had. We came up short, but, you know, from top to bottom, everybody left everything out there the whole time. Jarrell, you want to finish this part of it all? Um... I would probably say my junior year and our story, my, my story is kind of similar to Steve's uh, in the tournament in the Sweet 16 when we beat Miami. Um, I remember us walking out to, uh, um, we're working out to pregame warmups. And uh, I think it was Kenny Kaji. Uh, he actually said something as we were walking by. He goes, man, those guys are small. Well, we, we were. I think our biggest guy was Devante. And, like both ways, but uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, so uh, that was that was actually uh, uh, I would say 
the game that I remember the most. Uh, not because we just made it to the Elite Eight, but I think Miami was, they were a two seed, I think, one seed. And I think we were a three seed. I think we were a three seed that year. And everyone had Miami just killing us. Oh, Shane Larkin this, and Kenny Kaji this, and it's just Marquette has no chance, no chance. Um, and I think we ended up being up by as, as much as about 27 in the second half. And then we just kind of, it was like four minutes left, so we kind of let it dwindle down, and we ended up winning by probably like 18 or something like that. But I think, um, as these guys were saying, it just, it just proved to us who we were. You know what I mean? We didn't, we didn't let anyone talk down on us or anything like that, and, and we took it upon ourselves to go out there and handle business, and um, that's what we did. Steve, I'll let you have the, the last word on this because you scored 41 points and had 19 rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just a lowly double-double against UConn. <laughs> uh, when, you, when you've seen all the different eras of Marquette basketball represented here tonight, mm -hmm. uh, how does it make you feel to be a part of this, this family? Uh, you know, it, it's very humbling, I think. You know, Wes was touching on it a little bit. I think to just realize that, to really to be able to put a face, I think, to so many of the people that we've seen um, with their names listed in so many places in the practice facility, to be able to really be in the same room with so many of them and to realize that without the program being started when it was started and for, without the sacrifices that, uh, you know, all the different coaches made to build the programs and the players that have been here before us, you know, we just would not be sitting here at a, at a 100 year. And you just realize that it's continued to build on itself. And I think um, having the, all the coaches back, um, obviously besides Coach Williams, I think those guys too being in the room and having them all come back together. This has, the, the university, the, the program has been in, given and put in their hands so many times. And I think that there's been so many great leaders that have been here. So I think for us to be sitting here after 100 years, if, like you, what we joked about on the way out, guys that can barely walk, but that will be us one day, and we are all equally proud, you know, to be in this room together as a Marquette family um, is just extremely humbling and, um, and, and quite an honor. Well said. I can walk out and come. That is very well said, and uh, let's hear it for all the players of every era of Marquette basketball. <laughs>